The first major milestone in education for Latino immigrants happened in 1945 when Mexican-American parents sued several California school districts, challenging the segregation of Latino students. The California Supreme Court ruled in favor of the parents, arguing that the segregation was unlawful. This case set a precedent for Brown v. Board of Education in 1954. In 1963, the Ford Foundation gave a grant to the Coral Way Elementary School in Miami, Florida, which allowed them to fund the first bilingual education program in a public school. Unfortunately, not all schools embraced the Spanish language. Many actually prohibited Hispanic students from speaking their native language. As a result, in 1968, many Chicano students and their supporters staged over 200 walkouts across the nation fighting for better education for Latinos. This then led to an amendment of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act to add the Bilingual Education Act. While this legislation addressed all linguistic minorities, the movement was led by Latinos. Between 1970 and 1974, numerous acts and memorandums issued by the federal government reinforced the importance of bilingual education and equal opportunities for Spanish-speaking immigrants. In 1993, President Clinton signed the last major influential executive order for Latinos entitled Educational Excellence for Hispanic Americans to improve access to education, increase the number of high school graduates, and ensure that more Latinos enroll in and graduate from college. The largest wave of Irish immigration to the United States occurred in the 1840s, and the vast majority of these immigrants were Catholic. At this time, the U.S. was largely Protestant, and the Irish Catholics were discriminated against in society. Tensions grew between the religious groups, and the Irish families did not want to send their children to public schools, as they would have been taught Protestant values. The Catholic school system began in the United States as a reaction against the publicly funded school system that was essentially Protestant. At this time, the government funds used for schooling were controlled by Protestant clergy, who did not want to provide money for Catholic education. In 1840, New York State Governor William Seward argued in favor of the Irish Catholics. He wanted the religious schools to receive state aid just as the public schools had. This was a time when the Catholic schools were being flooded by immigrants from Ireland, as well as other European countries, and the overpopulation and lack of funds left many children closed out of school. The trustees of the city's Catholic churches petitioned the common school board to be included in the public funds, but they were denied. Then, in 1875, President Grant called for a constitutional amendment prohibiting the use of public money for any school that was not religiously neutral. In 1874, Senator James G. Blaine had proposed such an amendment, but it did not pass. However, these so-called Blaine Amendments would be modeled for laws that would be eventually passed in 39 U.S. states. Today, no state has changed its laws to allow state funds to be used for this purpose. The first wave of Chinese immigration began with the gold rush in California in 1849. Citizenship was not an option and Chinese students were excluded from the public school systems. In 1857, San Francisco opened the first school for Chinese children. However, by 1859, laws were passed in California to legally prohibit Asian students from San Francisco public schools. In 1882, the United States passed the Chinese Exclusion Act, which prevented the immigration of Asians, except for elites, for 60 years. Two years later, in 1884, parents of a Chinese female student sued the San Francisco School Board for their refusal to enroll their daughter. This resulted in San Francisco opening segregated oriental schools in the future. Fast forward to the middle of the 20th century, when our government frequently welcomed Asian engineers and scientists with eagerness to boost technology after the Cold War. The inclusion of Chinese students created some problems. One example was in the years of 1968 and 1969, when students at universities protested and demanded ethnic programs be offered at their schools. In 1974, the lawsuit Lau v. Nichols dealt with Asian parents suing public schools, which resulted in laws for bilingual education in the future. In the 1980s, many Asian students were victims of affirmative action when universities rejected qualified Asian applicants and imposed quotas. They did this because officials discovered that while Asian Americans made up less than 3% of the total population, the number of Asians at their universities were about 15%. This led to the model minority myth, a belief that Chinese and other Asian groups are perceived to achieve a higher degree of success than the average population. While other minority groups have had difficulty achieving in the United States school system, Asian students are doing well now that our education system has adapted. The decades between 1880 to 1920 brought a wave of Italian immigrants into the Northeast region of the United States, into areas such as New York and New Jersey. 
The population escalated from less than 4,000 Italians in 1850 to about 44,000 by 1880, rising until 484,027 by 1900. The school-aged immigrants suffered from discrimination. Documents from the 1920s reveal how Italian school children were subject to the racist notion that they were considered less intelligent than their peers, which the school system validated with biased IQ tests. They were frequently placed onto vocational tracks that required low-level skills. But Dr. Leonard Cavello, a prominent educational scholar, worked to fight against the gearing of Italian school children towards solely vocational work. He protested the opening of a vocational technical school in East Harlem for Italian boys, stating that its establishment would imply that immigrants were not capable of academic work. Eventually, Cavello became principal of Benjamin Franklin High School in 1934, where he established an egalitarian school system that proved the beneficial effect of encouragement on a student's academic motivation. Since the beginning of the 20th century, Italian-Americans' relationship with education has greatly advanced. Various scholarships exist now, such as the National Italian-American Foundation, in order to improve the academic experience of today's generation. Currently, legislators are working to pass the Development, Relief, and Education for Alien Minors Act, or DREAM Act, which would allow illegal immigrants to gain temporary residency provided they do not have any criminal charges and have graduated from high school or have a GED or have completed two years of college or two years in the military. This bill, if passed, will have a major lasting impact on immigrants and education.